So with no further ado, I would like to introduce our next uh, presenters, which is a tag team between uh, Sheila Stephenson from One Spatial. Uh, she's the CEO of One Spatial and Kevin Sigwert, who is the COO. And they're going to be talking about some uh, really interesting technology uh, that we use here in the county to do uh, data management and QA and, and so on. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Sheila and Kevin uh, and take it away. Thanks, Steve. So as Steve said, I am Sheila Stephenson, and I'm pleased to be here with you today, although that's a quite a tough act to follow. But what I would say is maybe some people say what we do is a little bit magical. So maybe we can say we're following with the magic act. So you want to go to the next slide, Ken? So, um, and, and one spatial, just for a, a little bit of a high level overview of who we are and what we do is we focus on helping people with their data challenges. We have an automated rules engine that focuses on things like automating the processes of data validation and cleaning up data. Um, also um, tougher things like change detection and completion. And, um, and then doing this across the enterprise of data. And so you can see we have quite a wide array of clients working with LA County, as Steve mentioned, um, also at state level, like with the state of Michigan, where we're implementing a spatial data infrastructure project, state of Maryland and others where we're working on, um, on other sort of spatial data infrastructures and helping them get their data to a point where it's really fit for purpose. And I like to point out the, also the work we're doing with Google and also Caltrans because um, we are data agnostic. So while we focus a bit on spatial data, we work across the enterprise, as I said. And so in the case of Google, we're working with them in their real estate worldwide services to help them with their asset management and also their um, CAD or computer-aided drafting data. So I am going to pass it over to Kevin now since we have a very short kind of 15 minutes or so and he's going to jump right in. Thank you, Sheila. I will try not to talk too fast. <laughs> All right, so Sheila mentioned we focus on data management solutions. And when we're talking about data management, we're really talking about these three main aspects, and that's data validation, data integration, and data enhancement. So we have a rules engine, our one integrate software, that you define the business rules of your data, and then anything that doesn't conform to those business rules gets flagged as non-conformances. We have a whole set of different business rules for different industries, um, but all of those rules are configurable. So you can start with, you know, road centerline validations and you can apply it to, to water utilities or, or what have you. So no matter what your industry is that you're working with at in, in, the, in LA County, uh, we can uh, support those, uh, running those validation checks against the data. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing mostly on addressing validation checks that we've implemented at a variety of different organizations. But just keep in mind that this could be any other, any data set. Uh, the next thing is data integration. Sheila mentioned we're data agnostic. We can connect into a variety of systems. So, you know, this is GIS day and we do a lot of work in, in GIS. We've our name is one spatial, but we can connect into non-spatial systems too. Because a lot of times there's a lot of good information in these non-spatial systems that you either want to integrate with your GIS or you can use it to cross-validate your GIS. So connecting into these asset management systems like a Maximo or a Tririga and validating it against your GIS databases. Or maybe if you're in with dealing with parcels, your CAMA systems. So doing those cross-validations across the enterprise. And then lastly is data enhancement. Uh, in our engine, we can actually identify issues and then tell the system how to auto-correct those issues. So that could be aligning your features, fixing your topology issues, moving things to be in a more spatially accurate uh, position, things like that, integrating CAD drawings into your GIS, all those sorts of efforts that we can do um, leveraging the one integrate technology. So I was going to focus on a couple of use cases real quick, and then I'm going to do a quick demonstration. And we're going to try to do this all in about 10 minutes. So buckle your seatbelts up. <laughs> we're going for a ride. All right. So uh, one of our, our clients is the state of Maryland. And for the state of Maryland, we are hosting a portal, a validation portal, to validate against their, end, their addressing data against the next generation 911 standards. So making sure that it is meeting the, uh, the NINA guidelines, which is the... Um, National Emergency Numbers Association. I think that's right. Uh, somebody's gonna correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure. Um, but then we can validate against those, uh, making sure the data is meeting the needs of those needed guidelines. So this consists of validating against 16 layers 
it gets 250 validation checks. The counties can literally just log into the system, drag and drop their data into it. It's going to validate it. It's going to tell them what their conformance levels are to those rules. And then we'll give them a report back, a geospatial report, so they can open it up in their GIS client. Uh, we've taken this particular implementation and we've extended it for the state of Michigan, where we're doing something very similar, uh, where they can submit data for validation, but then we're also providing a data supply chain so that the data that is being submitted goes into a centralized data repository. And to facilitate that, you need to be able to determine what's different from the data that's being provided by the local uh, governments and what they exist, what's in the existing system. So we go through a automated change detection process, determine what's different, those go into change proposals, and those change proposals get integrated into their next generation 911 statewide data set. Um, so what we're doing here for Michigan, and actually let me, oh, we're doing for Michigan, we're doing the exact same thing for LA County. So you're taking what we've done and extending those rules, configuring those rules so that it, whether you're a state government or a, or a county government or even a local jurisdiction, you could replicate this same process. So providing the the uh, the validation portal to validate the data, but also support that in data integration process of doing that change detection and integrating those changes into a centralized data repository. And what we're doing is we're doing the the validation step. We're running it through um, some essential geometry check, geometric checks, validations against the network, the NINA validations, and then we're also going to be adding in some additional validation checks in the future. We are currently working through that right now, which additional validation checks the uh, the county wants us to add. And then lastly is doing that whole change detection process. So with that, let's show you um, how this all works. So what we're going to do is just to give you a quick idea of the data that we're dealing with, we have uh, some addressing data, so address points, some parcels, some some building footprints, some road satellites, and we want to run it through the validation portal to validate the data uh, to make sure that it's meeting the business needs. So we're going to go ahead and flip over to the validation portal. Now, this is a the One Data Gateway product that sits on top of our One Integrate product. Uh, this is being hosted right now in at the uh, the County of LA. So LA County, uh, Steve mentioned, um, they are hosting this application, um, and um, so. If I am a local jurisdiction, I can log into the system and then I could submit data to be validated. Now, we know that a lot of these local jurisdictions, they may have contractors that work with multiple different at different different working for different jurisdictions. So when I log in, I might see multiple different jurisdictions that I can submit data on behalf of. So in this case, I'm going to submit data on behalf of uh, West Hollywood. And let me start from the beginning. All right. So then I'm going to go ahead and grab my data set here. We're going to drag and drop it into the application. And we're going to, the first step that's going to allow us to do is do some schema mapping. Now, we understand that uh, whenever we're dealing with these data supply chains, when you're submitting data um, as a local jurisdiction or as a county up to a state or, or what have you, or even, a, or even a state to the federal government, is that you're managing the data and maybe in a slightly different schema than the, uh, than the, the, the data collector is managing the data. And this is because you're supporting your own systems. You have your own uh, systems that your GIS is supporting. So it may require a different schema or different representations and so forth of the data. So what we want to provide is the way to quickly map the data to a particular schema so that you can upload the data once, set that mapping up, and then the next time you submit data, you don't have to go back through that whole process so that you can set up that schema mapping, run it through, and then you can start running through the validation checks. So now what it's going to do is it's going to take that data, it's going to bring it into the engine, and it's going to run through a series of validation checks. Now this is going to take about two to three minutes to run through. We only have, I think I said when I first started talking, I only had about 10 minutes. So while this is running, I'm going to uh, I'm going to jump around a little bit, and then we'll come back and show the results. Yep, so as this is running, <laughs> I have minutes. five left. Yeah. All right, see there we go. Okay. Steve is keeping me to that to that time limit. <laughs> um, so what we have here is we could see anytime I've submitted data in the past. So I could see for any of my previous submissions. I could also see as the data supplier, well, what is the quality of my data? Um, so I could I get a nice little chart showing how often I'm submitting data, what the quality of the data, what rules are failing the most, and how the quality is trending over time. 
I also get a nice little dashboard at the county level to see I can aggregate everything up to a uh, for a particular project. So in this case here, I can look at you know all of my jurisdictions when they're submitting data. How is that quality changing over time? I can see who's submitting data when they're submitting it, and I could see I could check to see which rules are failing the most for all my different jurisdictions. And then with that information, I may need to know that I may need to do some further outreach, or maybe I need to tweak the rules to be more specific. So those are things that you can figure out. So as this is running through, let's see here, come back over here. As this is running through, let's just come here over here. I'll just show an example that's already run. So here's an example that has already run through. We're getting the, the quality results, seeing what percent quality of the data is. I can either download this as a PDF report so that I could keep it for my records, or I could download the results in a geospatial data set, whether it's a shapefile or file geodatabase, and I could bring it into my mapping application of choice. So we could bring that into the application, identify where my issues are, and it's going to pinpoint on the map where those issues are occurring. So here's an example where we have a kickback, where we're flagging exactly where that issue is occurring. Um, we are also validating to make sure that my, you know, my, my address points are actually within a building footprint. Notice here, this address point's not. And then here's another example of where our road center lines aren't connected at the intersection. So here, the road center line splits through, it's not connected at that intersection. We can also validate the attribution with the actual uh, geometries too. And let's see here real quick. Um, here, here we have two, ad, two road center lines and the address ranges are overlapping. Um, so just doing spatial checks, non-spatial checks, and all of this can be configured inside the rules engine. So with that, I will flip it back over well i guess we can i don't know if we're going to open this up for questions or not steve but um we already have one yeah okay so we well, can you but if you want to take questions now or show your anything else first you're good we actually I think we're three good. minutes early okay yeah you, <laughs> yeah you're you're got more time for questions so i'll we'll take the first question but i'll again encourage folks if you have other questions put them in the panel um so could you please elaborate on how these validations are done who creates validation layers and who marks them as authoritative oh great great question so the the rules that there's a rules engine at the configurable rules engine where you can define the business rules of your data um, so and then the, the person that authors the rules, well, the person that comes up with the rules is typically the whoever the, the authoritative um, data owner is. So it could be someone like Steve or, or Rachel um, on the uh, on the CAM side. They could say, these are the business rules that we are setting for this particular data set. Um, and that's how those, um, and then those rules get configured in the engine itself. Kevin, so, yeah, one wanna, of the things, yep. yeah, I just wanna add one thing real quick to that. So in the case of the Nina, uh, standard, what we did is use the NINA standard to actually establish the rules to say this is what NINA says the data must look like to meet the requirements. So it's usually a subject matter expert of some sort, whether it's the authoritative owner of the data or it's some kind of a governing body that is saying this is what the data must look like. Okay, very good. And I put it in the chat, but I'll also a comment um, as you see. Uh, this is the system, as, as Kevin and Sheila have alluded to, that we're using at the county as part of our countywide address management system, sort of update and rebuild. Um, so if you're from one of our local jurisdictions and haven't contacted Rachel uh, Martina, or Marquez, um, I put her email in the chat window. She is our CAMS coordinator. Um, these are ways that we're not just trying to aggregate and organize our countywide addresses, points and, and center lines and so on, um, but again, this is a, a place for you to working with us to get your data validated. And Kevin, maybe you could talk a little bit about if somebody's putting data into this validation, but they don't use the same exact, you know, database structure or systems that we do in the county. Um, how is this going to help them? Oh, great, great question. So, by being able to download those results you'll be able to, it's going to pinpoint you where your issues are occurring. So say, for example, you're not necessarily leveraging um, Esri technology for, for, for whatever reason. Um, well, you can upload a shapefile and it will give you back a shapefile so that you could bring it into your GIS system of choice. So it's not dependent on whatever um, GIS technology you're using. So that's going to um, empower a lot of the, um, 
uh, the jurisdictions to use whatever software that they actually have access to. Um, and uh, it's going to give you that inform enough information to help you get your data cleaned so that it, you could support your other systems. Okay. Do we have any other questions from the, the participants here? Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to come up with more questions. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want my questions now. <laughs> Sure, I'll Everyone's, ask a question. Nick's going to take it. Okay, thanks, thanks. Sure. So, can you just kind of talk about how? What if it's not, you know, road or or addressing data? Can you talk about just some of the other types of geospatial data sets that you might be able to help a, a municipality or jurisdiction or company work with, and 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 elaborate on that a bit? Oh, sure. Yeah. So I mentioned a little bit in the beginning of parcel data. So validating parcels, making sure you don't have gaps or overlaps in your parcels making sure that uh, your, your information in your parcel data set matches what's in your CAMA system, your computer-aided mass appraisal system. So doing that cross-reference. Uh, in the utility space, we do a lot of work with uh, uh, water utilities. Um, so you're making sure that you have a, just like a road center line, a, a, a utility network needs to be properly connected, have proper assets associated with it um, and so forth. Uh, we do a lot of work on, you know, and then there's also the uh, beyond that electrical and gas. Um, and then, um, I don't know, Sheila, what else? Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> so anything really, if you look at it, anything that's in your GIS or actually in associated systems, like Kevin mentioned, the parcels to the to the CAMA systems, and there may be like in the utilities where they have um, some kind of a, 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 a uh, like an SAP or something that has customer information and making sure that that's all tied together. And like we mentioned in the case of Google, um, there are still people who are utilizing, there's a lot of entities that utilize CAD or computer-aided drafting and to be able to validate that data. And anybody who's tried to take CAD and integrate it into GIS knows that that can be a bit of a pull your hair out event. <laughs> and uh, and so you can validate the data to make sure that it, 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 um, it, uh, is correct. And then when you translate it in, then you can also validate it and use the software to help integrate it. And there was another question, it looks like that came up for what kind of validations are there. And out of the box, you get some core validations and, and also some core, what we call actions or fix-ups to the data, because that's the other thing you can use the, the system to automate the cleanup of the data. And, uh, but out of the box comes with some standard OGC type checks. Um, you know, just making sure that um, certain sta spatial standards are, are, are correct within your data. Kevin showed some of them like kickbacks and, and um, uh, un disconnected data and those sorts of things. Um, but then the other thing is that the rules that can be developed out, what I like to say is anything you can put into a sentence that is um, a statement about what your data must look like because the way we approach rule development is from a positive standpoint. And so you look for my data must meet these criteria. It must look like this, this, and this. So anything that falls outside of that, it will then, the system will flag it if it doesn't meet one of those criteria and tell you which criteria it doesn't meet. So what's good about that is that if you set a specific set of errors you're looking for, there may be an error that you're not even aware of could ex exist. So this really helps you understand fully where are the potential anomalies or issues with your data. That's great. So thank you. Um, and I think that's, you know, sort of at the big picture level, that's the thing that we're finding is we've started working with this tool in our CAM system for addressing and center lines, we're seeing other opportunities to diversify these kinds of rules across other geospatial data uh, that we're working with in the county. So um, I think it's, you know, it's a growing uh, opportunity. I think we're seeing to take some of the manual editing away from, you know, and tedious parts away from GIS and move into these other realms. Um, and I think that's going to be, you know, really powerful for us in a number of projects going forward. So we've been really excited to to work with uh, Sheila and Kevin on this, uh, developing the platform and the rules uh, to do that going forward. 